I think it's important to study everything. Before you uh, decide what you don't want to paint the cityscapes, uh, you prefer landscape, it's possible, it's your decision, but you have to be able to try that. And you can, if you can do this and decide to switch to another one subject, that's okay. Boy, do I have a treat for you this week as we talk to more pro watercolor artists about how they make their living and what they do professionally. We have Michael Sullivan. I'm super stoked. He's a brand ambassador of Daniel Smith and just recently hit the big one with Escoda brushes. He will be showing you. Wow, <laughs> I'm so blown away. He will be showing you his new package that's been designed by Escoda. If you've been searching for how to be a pro artist and enjoy this series, because we've had a few of these and you guys are, wow, just like super just diving into these. And I'm so glad these have been beneficial. Thank you so much for all the comments. Put more comments down in the bottom. Go to the description. You'll see all the links for Michael. And uh, I'll see you at the end of this video. Enjoy. Michael, thank you so much for coming on to this podcast, this YouTube video, where I get to have the pleasure of asking you wonderful questions that uh, other people that are looking for uh, where to go next. Could you just start with, tell a little bit about your background, how you got into art, and what you do as a professional artist? First of all, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. You know, it's a pleasure for me, first of all, because we are friends. And second, because you are, for now, one of the most active person on the vertical world. So I appreciate your time and invitation. And thanks for the question. It's a good question. So, you know, uh, normally all the people starting to paint and sketch then he was like uh, five years old. So I did the same. I just decide do not stop to build a career or make money or something because I'm really enjoying the process. So since that age, I'm painting, sketching uh, in the different things uh, like uh, an education uh, kind of different. It's not just a fine art. It's all, all the time something different. Like uh, in the uh, native, I'm Russian. And in Moscow, I'm working like a stage designer uh, a lot of years. And... That's the cool stuff, by the way. Uh, so I was responsible for the makeup, for the costume design, for the stage, for the light, for everything. And uh, I'm still using that background and I'm painting in watercolor because, you know, sometimes uh, just a piece of garbage on the stage can be look like a castle if you make the right light on that. So that's exactly what I uh, discovered for me in around, my, uh, around me in the world. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm trying to pick up the light and all my fit background, background helps me a lot. What are you doing now? With watercolor, you have a big presence here on YouTube. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. So uh, I'm trying to involve people uh, to the watercolor because I'm really like that medium. It's uh, something very specific. Oil, acrylic, they're close stuff, but watercolor, it's it's uh, like a real adrenaline and real life. And because I'm teaching around the world and traveling a lot for the workshops, like, uh, for instance, this year, it's uh, 27 workshops around the world in the different countries. 17 countries so uh, that's why um, sometimes I couldn't uh, connect to my students and there is no time to do that so that's why uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep them busy and that's why each Monday I run a video on my YouTube channel uh, for free so everybody can follow me enjoy and all the time it's a kind of different techniques different ideas so I do my best to keep my students really, really busy and continue to study the watercolor. And that's what I'm doing. So every day painting, that's why, you know, my brushes never dry. And that's another one problem. I have to change it. It's not, you know, like a pipe. You couldn't smoke the same pipe all the time. You have to make a break and because the pipe have to rest. The same happens with my brushes. So full time and just this. Also paint in another medium, and that is oil, correct? 
That's right. You know, because uh, in Russia, I took like a real classical education. Uh, normally, all the classical education starting from oil. And I like that material as well. Um, I'm still painting with oil. I just, I don't like acrylic, uh, honestly. Uh, I like all the mediums except the acrylic. So because it's, uh, you know, the feeling that I'm touching that it's like uh, something like a real plastic. It is plastic. But oil is kind of different things. It's a natural pigments and it's interesting. So I'm enjoy that. You know, just uh, the huge difference between uh, watercolor and the oil then you paint and by oil, you are responsible for everything what you do. It's just you. You touch your canvas and that will be like that forever. Nothing changed. Into color, uh, you're not alone. You paint it with the water. And if you do something in the 15 minutes, it will be look different because of the water. So that means you have a partner and you are not responsible for everything. You're responsible just for the for your job, for the half of the project. And that's cool. So you have a lot of excuses. If you make something nice, uh, that's your honor. If something look bad, that's problem of what. So it's a good idea. Does someone have to have that gene in them or can anyone learn how to watercolor? Uh, you know, first of all, uh, I'm starting to uh, be like a painter in fine art. Uh, to, I, I paint all my life, but I didn't make the career like a fine art painter. It just happens here in Canada. Uh, then I make my immigration. It was uh, 12 years ago. So we start in career from zero here. And that's why it slowly takes the time because uh, in Moscow, I was like a stage designer and I like, and it's completely different. And by the way, uh, one of the most important ability, uh, what I took from this, and I'm still using this uh, fast sketching. Just imagine you sitting with a director, uh, we're trying to create a new character. And he say, okay, what if he will be look like that? And I have to be able to sketch this to show him, say, no, let's make a nose a little bit longer. So make this like bigger and change the dress. And I have to be explain that another one time and change my characters and make it understandable for the artist as well. So it's interesting process. And that's why uh, I hold pencil in my hands all the time. So sketching, sketching. Sometimes it was like a blueprints. Sometimes it's very simple sketches. Sometimes with, with a watercolor, but it's never stopped. So that's what I'm doing all, all my life. And honestly, um, it's not really a huge difference between, I can say, uh, you're responsible. You're not responsible for everything, but we have all the time seven colors, like a seven notes and some seven colors in the rainbow. It's almost the same. A little bit, if you switch to the oil, it's technically, it's different, but ideas and spirit and the rules and the idea how you build your project, it's almost the same thing. Not, not like a huge difference. It's like in music, the same. You can switch from a piano to the guitar and it's still just musician and create the sound. I love the analogy of notes and music and art and, and music can be so emotional. And I think uh, if there's anybody I'm interviewing in this series, in this segment, is you can expound on being that expressive motion in your work. Uh, that's a great question. And thank you very much for that. That's a very important question. That's what I'm uh, doing with my students as well. So, uh, you know, um, it's a not right idea to try and to uh, copy what we see. Nobody interested in that. Any camera or any printer make it much better than you, so it doesn't make sense to do that. And that's exactly uh, not artist's way. And nobody interested in how it's look like in reality, because now everybody have a cell phone and can take a picture and see what is this. But people interested in what you think about what you see, and that's the difference. So uh, my feeling, my emotions, my impressions about this subject, uh, that's what I'm trying to pick up. Uh, you know, I, I can tell you the funny story, by the way. Uh, that happens with me when I was a young student, uh, like around 20 years old. I'm sitting in my studio and I'm painting a lot and, and uh, a lot. I'm studying very hard. So 
on my walls everywhere was a lot of paintings. And at once, uh, my master uh, came to my studio, I look around and uh, after break, like he, he keep the silent and after break, he say, you know, any stupid guy can paint what he see. Try to paint what you didn't see. I was a just young boy and I have no idea what he mean. And you know, I, I just feel terrible. So he just like uh, crossed all, all everything what I did. And it's took maybe 20 years to honestly understand uh, what he was trying to tell me. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm trying to push uh, in that way my students. Um, the reality is very interesting. We have to study that, but we don't have to explain the reality. We have to explain our feeling about the reality. And that's the huge difference. So emotions is a huge part of my job. That's so good. And how do you find watercolor and it rewarding than other mediums? Uh, as I say, uh, you control less and you know, it's it's a good way uh, to, to study uh, partnerships. Uh, it's like you're trying to build a family uh, because you have to trust water. You know, don't force it. Sometimes, uh, and, and that happens just in watercolor. Sometimes something happens on your paper, like uh, an accident, and which you're not planning to do. It just happens. And uh, if you want to build good relationship, uh, you have to stop and think, maybe it's look interesting. Maybe I have to keep it. Uh, maybe it's nice, yeah, unpredictable, but nice special effect. And you can use it. So the uh, trust to your partner, it's very important point for watercolor. It's not exist in oil, a little bit, but not that much. Pastel, all that medium, just in watercolor. And plus one of the most interesting thing which make watercolor completely different, uh, it's just one medium which exists in time. Because what you're doing in oil, what you did, that will be like that forever. The water color changes. So we, we couldn't expect a result right now. We have to try to predict how it will be look in time. And uh, it's like we work in the future and it's, it's just in water color. That's why I like it. So we try to predict a result and not expect a result now. And it's, that's the question of trust. And I like that. There was a thing about that came up with some beginning students and even some of the intermediate students is about trusting using good quality materials. That's right. How important is it to have good, good brushes and good paint? Uh, the materials in watercolor, it's extremely important. Uh, that's what I hear all my life. The students say, okay, I'm just a beginner. That's why I'm starting to use something cheap, save my money. Then I will be a master. I switch to something expensive. You know, it's possible in oil because honestly, except some very specific techniques, uh, the quality of the materials is not that important. If you are uh, using like a flaming style painting, yes. If you use many, many layers, yes, but normally no. In watercolor, it's again, just one medium, where is all the materials going inside each other. So the pigments going deep inside the paper. And that's why uh, if you switch, just imagine, if you're doing the same movement, using the same pigments, but using the different paper, you will have a different result completely. So uh, for any project, uh, have to be a uh, right paper, have to be right paints, right brushes. And uh, that's what I say to my students as well. Uh, you know, if you are a great level master, like a top guy, maybe, maybe you have a chance to make something okay, acceptable using the cheap materials. But in the beginning, no way. To, to study the watercolor, you need, you know, the, uh, the best paint, the Daniel Smith, it's the best on the planet. You need the best paper, 100% cotton. You need the best brushes, what you can pick up around you. And, uh, and the process uh, never stops because uh, then you're growing up, 
you switch from one brand of paper to another one. You change your palette. Like, like uh, three years ago, I used ultramarine a lot. For now, I'm stopped to use that. I switch to the cobalt. And who knows what will be in the few years. So it's it's process never stop, but the quality is extremely important. No way to do something nice. It's yeah, you know, it's like you if you're cooking, if you want a good steak, you need a good meat. There is no way to make a good steak if you use something cheap stuff. So no way to save money on watercolor, unfortunately. We have to uh, spend a lot and we have to find the best what we can. Just that can guarantee what you have a nice result. I remember when we were in Fabriano and we were bus mates. I asked you if you had a USB cord so I can charge my phone. <laughs> it, and I still have it. And awesome. Okay. Awesome. You did this, you picked up your head and you go you like this, and then you showed me that it was a USB bracelet, and you said nothing but the best. And you know, you gifted this to me, and this has helped me so many times. And I love that uh as an artist in we can have so many really good gadgets, you know, but yes. I loved the one thing you said on that trip that was one of my take homes. It's it's about quality. Yes. And uh, I know you sell um, brushes and yeah. you even Daniel Smith has given you your own uh, yes. not the top part, but you have yes, your own that. paints yep. right there. You have your set of paints and, you know, people think they need all this fluff and they can go to a store and buy 20 brushes in a package that's like for five dollars when yeah. if you buy this set of brushes that's maybe like four or you know five and i know you also work with escoda and yes, that's congratulations on becoming brand ambassador oh, yeah. and i'm super excited you're gonna show us something Yes, that's the oh, set of that. trades for me. Yeah, no, that's the. Uh, I'm really happy what the Daniel Smith and the Skoda Brush is doing that for the artist, because uh, it helps students to follow in, uh, me, for instance, more easily. Because you know, before uh, I make the big list of the colors, list of the brushes, and they have to find one by one, and it's, sometimes it's very complicated. So for now, it's more easy. They just order that box, and they have everything what they need to follow me and study uh, what we have in the books, my video courses. The same uh, with the Skoda and with uh, my set, what I use every day. So that's the great solution. And uh, I'm really like what the companies are uh, doing there. Plus, the Skoda brushes, Daniel Smith. Uh, we are, it's real like a family, we are in the contact. I know sometimes on the workshops, uh, they call me and uh, just for the one minute and say, Michael, we know what you have a workshop in, in Girona in Spain, we wish you good luck just for this. And that, that's incredible because it's, I, I feel like a really part of the family and they ask uh, that companies ask us for advice. Then we create uh, new pigments. They send it to us uh, for trying to all the ambassadors. You're doing the same. I know that I see the beautiful paint uh, behind you. So it's a, it's a gouache, right? Okay. Okay. That's the uh, that's what I have, but I didn't try it yet. It's just like a Christmas time. So I need to, uh, like an empty few days to try in the gouache because I, I saw your video and it's look like you really like it. So it's interesting stuff. And I, I like how bright the colors. So that's very important uh, in the artist world to be in contact with the companies who create the materials because that's exactly our tools. And we need the best uh, to make something really, really nice. And that's why I appreciate the communication with the Daniel Smith, his photo brushes. It's, it's very important to growing up. Yeah. That's so good. Now, um... I love, I love materials, you know, and, 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 and in this field, it's hard to write it, fall into like writer's block because uh, now you can buy a, a different brush or try a different paper or mm -hmm. try a new tube of paint that you haven't yeah. used. So the, the limited is, it sky is the limit. 
But when you also focus on a little while to get some of your mileage in and mm -hmm. like your your paint set, you know, if, if people can just and we were just talking about this in a class the other day about having a minimal paint set and yeah. mix them together and see what they all get. And I know you teach that really well. Can you I'm expand trying. on a minimal palette? Yeah, I'm trying to, to do that because, you know, um, so I have in my studio, I have a lot of different colors. I like a lot of them. But uh, then I uh, try, I'm a really hunter. I'm trying to new pigments, new brushes all the time. Uh, I'm I'm disc I'm continuing to discover, but you know, then uh, I take uh, the new pigment, new tube, even if I'm very like it. Uh, the main question is how that color will be part of my family and my colors in my palette or not, because sometimes itself it's a brilliant, but it doesn't mix with the colors what I'm used. So it couldn't be part of my family. That's why I just keep it like separated. I, I respect it. I like it but it's not part of me. And sometimes uh, the color itself look like a very ugly and terrible, but it's great for mixing. So uh, the relationship because between the colors what you have on your palette, more important than uh, compared to how the color look itself. So that's why uh, if I have a new pigment in the tube, I'm trying that itself for sure, but I'm trying to mix that with all what I'm using every day. And sometimes it's like, wow, it's great. It can be part of the family because it's giving me a, a lot of different interesting mixes. And sometimes I say, okay, mm -mm, no, thanks. It's beautiful, but no, it, it doesn't uh, work with me. So uh, it's important. That's right. So good. And I think what people also need to hear from you is, you're a master painter. You can paint everything and anything. We've had this discussion over beautiful glasses of uh, wine and dinner in Italy. And, you know, can you speak though? Like, yes, people would love to paint everything, figures, landscapes, animals, everything. But is there an importance of maybe sticking with maybe landscape for a little while and then making sure that you learn how to be able to paint waves? You know, what would you tell someone that would like to paint everything, but they want to get on the art scene? Should they have a consistent subject matter? Okay, that's another one. Brilliant question. You know, uh, for my feeling, it's for sure it's a personal choice. Uh, people decide who wants to focus on the portraits, uh, they stuck on the portraits, who prefer the landscape, they paint on the landscape. But, um, uh, but uh, if you are afraid, for instance, to paint the people, if you have no idea how, it's not your decision. It's a limitation, it's not decision. So for me, it's important. If you can paint the people and decide never paint it because you just don't like that process, Absolutely right. That's your decision. But if you say, yeah, I'm dreaming to paint the people, but I don't know how, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm always saying, okay, stop all your business. Just go to study how to paint the people. Learn that. Take all that information, what you need. And after that, say, okay, now I know how to do that. I don't want to do that. That's respectable. So for me, it's important. It's like uh, the, the same. It's not just an art. It's everywhere. How you can say what you uh, don't like against steak if you never try it. So you have to try everything what you can to decide that's mine, that's not mine. But first, study. And I don't like the idea of the limitation. Like uh, people, uh, the same for the cityscape, for instance. Uh, if the, some artists are stuck on the cityscapes, but have no idea how to sketch the cars or people. Uh, it's look like uh, empty streets and it never will be perfect. So it, it's okay. Maybe uh, someone prefer to make the cityscapes without people and without cars, but it's not because they have no idea how to do that because it's a personal style. That's I can respect. But if people are afraid, I have no idea how, stop your business and go to study that. That uh, 
help you to grow up and make your painting much better. That's so good. How important is it to know the rules of watercolor before you start breaking <laughs> rules? Of okay, it's like in the life the same. Uh, you know, we are an artist, and there is no rules for us, and we can do everything what we want if we know the reason. So we have to study the rules. Uh, it's my opinion. We have to know how it works, and we have to be. Uh, Familiar, we have to feel free to, to use that rules and know how to do this. And after that, we can decide, okay, I know that rules, I know how to follow that, but I want to change it. And that's your personal decision again. But that's I call it like in watercolor, we have a few uh, golden rules, I can say, like uh, we're painting from the top to bottom because the uh, water moving in that direction. We painting from light to shadow because uh, it's more easy to make your painting darker and it's kind of complicated, make it lighter in watercolor. So that's why we uh, layer by layer, we make it darker. But uh, sometimes if I paint like a nocturne uh, night landscape, uh, I'm starting from the bright, uh, bright and dark colors directly and make like a painting from black to light. And it's possible as well. So I broke the rules, but I have a reason for that. But you couldn't broke the rules if you don't know the rules. So it will be you feel be uh, you will be just a lost and feel lost. So it's important to study how it works. I know another thing that people, if they're interested and they've been researching here on YouTube about uh, wetting your painting first, and I know this is a practice that you do, and most people that are out there painting watercolors have no idea where to start. And why would someone want to wet their paper entirely first? Uh, the watercolor, it's, you know, it's a lot of water and just a little bit colors. Uh, so that that's why uh, water is the main tool in watercolor, plus uh, paper, and water have to uh, have a meeting before you start your process. They have to know each other. And uh, it's a very nice idea to represent, hey, water, that's the paper. Hey, paper, that's the water. They know each other and they are in connection. So after that, uh, it's, it's easy to, to do your job. Plus, um, I'm always uh, wet the backside uh, because uh, the pigments is drying fast. It's just, just the water. And I prefer to feel comfortable. Uh, you know, the, uh, the watercolor exists in time. It's time in process. You have to be uh, like a strong in time. Uh, you couldn't make a break uh, for the 20 minutes and take a cup of coffee because everything is dry and that's done. So to be able to connect all your spots, uh, you need a time. And that's why if your paper wet inside, the pigment's not drying, not that fast drying. So you have a time to look comfortable. And uh, it's not the idea to make your life stressful, right? So that's why I wet the paper. Nice. Uh, I know you have a really good work ethic. Uh, I mean, wow, you're traveling around the world and teaching. You're also teaching on YouTube. Um, how important is it for someone to keep their brush wet and be painting often? Um, yeah. It's another one brilliant question. Uh, just imagine if you want to study the different language. If you take the like one hour course once a week, after the 10 years, you still know zero. So if you want to st study your uh, new things, uh, it makes sense to practice. Even you know the 10 or 15 minutes, but every day. It's more important uh, for your hands. It's like a physical job. Your hand uh, have a memory. Your hands need to remember how to hold the brush, how to mix the colors. And a lot of things in practice come in automatically. Sometimes it's like a driving car, you know, sometimes you're thinking about something, don't see the road, it's make automatically process. So with the painting, the same. Sometimes you're focusing, but sometimes you're just thinking about something and your hands doing this job itself. So for this everyday practice, again, even the 15 minutes is important. We're moving to the portion where, you know, people have stuck around for so long now. 
and they probably want to know uh, more a little advanced stuff. What are the challenges do you face as a professional artist? Uh, it's, uh, it's a very interesting question. Um, the big challenge uh, don't stop. Because, you know, uh, sometimes if you take some Stop. level, uh, like, for instance, uh, you know how to paint the cityscape uh, with a bright, sunny light, and you're doing that all the time perfectly. So it's like a guarantee result. And if you start to produce the same thing again and again, that means from this moment, you're going to die like an artist. You're not an artist anymore. You're not making discovering around you. You're not studying something. You're starting to produce the product. And uh, it's, it's again, you are dead man from this moment, like an artist. And it's very important, never stop. If you know how to do that, switch to something what you never tried before. Continue to grow up. Uh, we are not the machines to produce the artworks. We are, uh, for my feeling, we are the people who discover the world and trying to explain what we feel about this. And for that, uh, never stop. And that's one of the bigger challenge because if you are on the same, some level, you want to keep that level. Uh, you don't want to make like a public mistakes. And then you'd make a demo or recording the video. Uh, you don't want to see like a stupid guy who couldn't make like a simple stuff. So if you're starting to afraid, you're gonna die. If you're starting to produce the paintings instead of the discover the world, you're gonna die. So that's the big challenge to keep your hungry. Never stop. Drop the microphone, gee whiz. <laughs> oh, uh, and there are some questions that people wanna know, like uh, you remember when like Yupo came onto the scene and there was like this trend of like, oh no, don't, don't, don't let Yupo into the show. Or then there was this thing about, you know, like putting some gouache uh, to bring in on your whites again. People were like, no, 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 no. And then they accepted it. Do you see any new trends right now happening with watercolor or coming soon? Uh you know, Gabriel, you're asking the brilliant questions all the time. So I really appreciate it. It's really, really good questions. Uh, for my opinion, uh, what we know about the watercolor and how we study the watercolor and how we teach watercolor, it's not right. Uh, because all our traditions, uh, honestly, coming from oil, that happens in our European style paintings, I can say. Like for instance, one of the uh, main mix what we use in oil, it's a mix between burnt amber and ultramarine. And a lot of students uh, and te teachers uh, continue to use that things and explain that to the students and they follow in them. But it's not, uh, it's not right idea for watercolor because the burnt amber, not transparent. Ultramarine, it's a little bit granulated. Sometimes, like a special effect, it's nice, but it's not like for the regular mixes all the time. The main thing in watercolor is transparency. And uh, for my feeling, we have to, uh, and that's what I think we're doing now in the watercolor world, we have to back to the traditional Chinese way how to use watercolor, because that guys know about that medium much more than we are. They are starting to use that thousand years ago compared to us, our civilization, European civilization. So my feeling we have to make a few steps back and start to study uh, the basic things from the this culture, because they doing uh, the watercolor in the different way. And we have to study that. It's not necessary to fall in this, but we have to start to think about the watercolor, not just like about the other medium compared to oil or acrylic we have to start to think about the watercolor like about water. First of all, it's just the water, colored water, but still water. So, and uh, what I saw on the festivals, on the exhibitions, uh, on the top events, what we have around the world, the watercolor world moving in that direction. It's less traditional stuff, more experimental uh, paintings, different style different techniques and plus uh, a lot of companies like uh, first of all daniel smith for sure 
they are they are really digging. They create new pigments just from the rocks, from the stones. And it's always new stuff. And that's why uh, the watercolor world growing up. We are not stuck, uh, which by the way, which never happens in oil because in oil we have the same pigments like, uh, I don't know, 200 years ago, the same, the same traditional things, the same mixes. Watercolor change it in time. It's growing up. We have a new stuff. Uh, like a, a primate and ground what created the Daniel Smith, it's new things and that's changed the style again. And so that's why uh, I can say the watercolor world, one of the most alive world now. What is the value of having a sketchbook? The sketchbooks, uh, you know, it's not like a final product. It's uh, our uh, territory for uh, trying something, for trying a new style try new materials, uh, discover the world again, uh, study the shapes, perspective, mixing colors. So it's like a laboratory. And I'm thinking about this uh, the sketching process like about that. Uh, then you take like a full sheet of the watercolor paper, which is expensive. Uh, and you know that a lot of people uh, put a lot of job and love to produce this paper, to produce the paint, uh, high quality uh, brushes. So you're responsible to use that in the right way. And you're kind of responsible for results. In, in sketching process, you're not responsible for that. You just can do everything you, you can try. You have a lot of excuses. You can take a piece of paper and put it in the garbage and try again and again and again. So this is the uh, laboratory when we are uh, studying. And after that, we take that experience and uh, go into uh, to big size paper. That's why I, I run a few projects like, a, for instance, Sketching Academy, it's a website, sketchingacademy.online. Then uh, every two weeks we put uh, the post, the new uh, courses for the students and keep again, people busy. That's why uh, I published that uh, book, Sketching Academy. And uh, here I talk about the different materials, different style, how to, how to sketch in depends of the uh, what you want to say, or depends of your subject, or depends the time what you have. And by the way, it's a good news. I finished the second book just two days ago. Yeah. So for now, I uh, I send it to my editor. Uh, we make some correction. It will be prepared to the uh, to the print house. And I believe maybe in a few months we have a volume two, which is very nice. And I'm really happy to do that. And I love that book. I have books on my nightstand. Uh, instead of looking at my phone and the screen keeping me awake at night, I can flip through your book. And I love you have the examples. It shows like an actual pencil that you use. And, um, you know, and they can go to that website and go buy that exact pencil that you use. And I think that's a huge, wonderful part that I love. And I think you're a great example of uh, you spend time painting and marketing. And, um, you know, you have pillars in place. You don't just sell in a gallery, you, you teach. Uh, can you speak a little bit about that importance for some of the pro artists that are listening right now? You know, uh, if uh, some art is like a focusing uh, on make money, uh, for my feeling, it uh, uh, will be much better to go to the like uh, property business or uh, sell insurance or something like that. On that way, you take much more money. So we are here, uh, and that's important. Uh, the artist here on that planet, not to take, to give. And this is our job. We, we, are, we, make, we have a gift and we have to share it. Uh, and that's, uh, I believe that's the universe or God create uh, the artist to uh, explain the, the other people how the world look like. And that, that's interesting stuff. So, uh, and if you make your job, the universe anyway uh, support you. So you never, uh, never die because you don't have a money to eat if you're doing your job. It's, normally it's never happens. 
But don't focus in on that. It's my advice for uh, any people who just uh, start his career, not focusing on the money. If you're thinking about that too much, yeah, for sure we need the money to survive. But if you're thinking about this more than about the real artist life, uh, go to sell insurance. You will be more rich and more happy. So it's not that point. And uh, uh, the galleries, uh, it's important point, uh, like a teaching, like everything. If you produce the painting, it makes sense to show that to the people because that's what we're doing. Uh, that we have to share it. We have to show that. And the galleries works for that uh, brilliant and the festivals and everything. But uh, again, sometimes in the galleries, uh, we have a painting like for the whole year, it's just on the wall and nobody wants to buy it. But a lot of people look at that and it's like in, you're going to the museum and that's important. So uh, if uh, I have some paintings in the galleries and we change it and it's not selling just like that, I'm okay with that. So no problem. It's still displayed and people still see that. And that's good. That's good. Thank you so much for sharing that and being transparent with us. And here's a funny question is, I'm pretty sure you don't make any bad paintings. Is that correct? <laughs> I'm making a lot of bad paintings, you know. Uh, a lot of paper is going to the garbage, and it's okay. Uh, nobody can guarantee what you all the time make something nice. If uh, that happens, if you again stop to discover, if you guarantee produce nice stuff, it's not the artist way. So you have to be ready to put a lot of paper in the garbage, and that's great. That's how we uh, exchange sometimes very expensive materials to our experience, which help us to save that materials for the next time. Thank you, Michael, so much for taking your time. Uh, you're a busy, very busy man, and I'm grateful that uh, to have you as my friend and coming on to this interview. Uh, is there anything, last thing you'd like to say to anybody? Definitely uh, let us know where can people find you. I'm going to put down here in the comments all your links to uh, where they can go. But where can people go find you, Michael? Uh, the best way to find uh, all what I'm doing on the website watercolonline.com. We created the website special to uh, uh, communicate with the students. You will find here all my video courses, all the materials, and all the information about the workshops. So that's the best way to connect. And uh, finally, like uh, advice for all the people who start to study watercolor or decide to be an artist, a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, never afraid. Never afraid to paint, never afraid to put the colors. Uh, be flexible and try to make an experiment. And be hungry. And the most thing, never stop. All right, bye, folks. Yes, thank you for your invitation, Gabriel. Bye. Wasn't that wonderful listening to Michael Sullivan tell and share his story? And yes, and he's an author of writing books on sketching and watercolor. Down in the description, you can go see those. Check out his website. Go ahead and encourage his behavior on teaching watercolor. I'm super excited. If you really found value in this, Please go ahead and hit that like button, smash that share button that you might, you know, here's one thing. If you don't know what to share on your Facebook or Instagram, share this video, my friends. I've been really re just enjoying the response that I've been getting uh, in all the comments of all the previous. Now, I did do a book review I'll put a link on that on uh, one of Michael's books where I actually flip through it. But thank you so much again. Have a wonderful day. Keep those paintbrushes wet like we heard in this video. Take care and keep painting. I'll see you next week when we interview another pro artist. Take care. Bye.